So we kind of have a unique problem coming up that I'm going to show you how we're going to solve in just a second. So it's not a unique problem per se, because I'm sure other people run into this and probably end up spending a lot of money on what I'm going to try to build at a more affordable price. Yeah. So the problem is I have to move this trailer into a piece of property for a party that we have coming up. For those of you who don't know, this is uh, Rum and Colt. This is our two horse horse trailer. In order to move this, usually I have to use my pickup truck or a vehicle of similar size to move this. And where we're going, I can't get my pickup truck and the trailer in and get the pickup truck back out. So I need something to move the trailer that's substantially smaller. So something that I've used to move it in the past was one of these trailer dollies. That's basically just two wheels with a ball and you can leverage lift the front of the trailer up and then you have to rely on your own strength to pull the trailer and this works for smaller trailers but for larger trailers like this one that weigh probably close to 5,000 pounds uh it's very difficult to move the trailer with that so i did find a couple of other options online uh they make a crank model that is something similar to this that you can hook a drill to um and then they also make uh an electric version as well that's anywhere from $1,200 to $1,500 to move something this size. So I decided to go a different route. So this is the route I decided to go. This is a eight horsepower, two stage snowblower. So basically we're gonna ditch the whole front section of this and put a caster wheel and a trailer hitch receiver on it and hopefully be able to tow the trailer with the drive wheels of the snowblower. I've seen this done online, but people have only showed it moving smaller trailers. So I'm curious to see if this is gonna work. If not, I'm gonna have to buy something. If this does work with a little bit of fabrication, we should be able to save a lot of money. So let's get into it. It's kind of funny but I'm trying to be pretty gentle so that I can save all these parts and come winter I could turn this back into a snowblower and still use it as a snowblower or if this whole project doesn't work uh, yeah I can convert it back to a snowblower. <laughs> So what I'm gonna to try to do is make a square frame here out of some square tubing or rectangular tubing, whatever fits in here, that can still be bolted the same way that the original blower assembly gets attached. So basically, then I should be able to just bolt it in, have a caster somewhere up here to balance it out, and then the ball will sit somewhere like where my fist is, similar to the way that the hand dolly works. And then if I ever wanna convert back to the blower, I should just be able to unbolt these four bolts put the blower assembly back on and hook up the cable and I have a snowblower again. So it's not just a single purpose tool like one of the trailer dollies would be. Let's get into cutting that steel and we'll pick up there. So my go-to for cutting tubing like this is my horizontal bandsaw. It creates a nice clean cut without throwing sparks and metal everywhere and makes the cleanup process before welding much easier. The tubing I used for this was inch and a half square tubing that was, I believe, 16 gauge or 14 gauge, which I felt was strong enough for this application. Five and a half. If you saw one of the previous episodes when I was working on the bar, I actually got this bandsaw from my neighbor Eddie, and it's been a huge asset to my fabrication arsenal.
Originally, when I started this project, I was going to TIG weld everything because I'm a little rusty and haven't practiced in a while, and I thought this was a good project for that. But being that I didn't know if this would work or not, I didn't want to waste a whole bunch of time TIG welding this to find out it didn't work and I was going to have to throw it away. So I decided to make it instead. So one thing I forgot to show you guys before, I ended up drilling out the holes to mount this to the actual snowblower body. And with that done, I'm going to start building out the section that will hold the receiver for the trailer hitch. While I was cutting this angle piece, I noticed that the bandsaw blade was stopping. I thought it was that the actual blade itself was too loose, causing it to stop. It ended up being the set screw on the drive belt pulley loosening up, causing the blade to stop. After tightening that up quick, it cut much faster. Next up, I marked the center to mount the horizontal piece that would hold the trailer receiver. The reason I used a horizontal piece underneath the trailer receiver is that welding the receiver directly to this tubing would have been pretty difficult because the hitch receiver was so much thicker than this tubing. By laying the two pieces of tubing on top of each other, you'd be welding corner to corner, which would allow me to weld at a hotter temperature and achieve a stronger weld. So to avoid having a sharp point at the bottom of this, I wanted to cut it off, but because the bandsaw mouth on my horizontal bandsaw is too small, I had to use the port band instead. In between cleaning off the trailer hitch receiver, I took a piece of scrap plate and drilled four holes in it to mount the caster wheel to the body of the snowblower. With that out of the way, I welded the receiver to the top of the square tubing, making sure to focus a lot of the heat into the receiver because it was a lot thicker than the tubing below. With the receiver securely mounted, I moved on to the caster wheel. I started by checking to make sure the bolt holes that I drilled lined up and then clamped and welded the plate to the bottom of the square tubing on the snowblower. I then bolted the caster wheel on and checked out how the wheel worked. At least just to roll this contraption around a little bit. And then it was finally time to try and test it. So I know what you're thinking. This isn't the trailer that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. This trailer is actually my car trailer that I built a while back. And before hooking it up to our business, I decided to move the car trailer a little bit back and forth and make sure the concept worked before trying it out on the bar. To my honest surprise, this snowblower trailer dolly contraption worked pretty well at moving the car trailer. And because it worked so well, I decided to get our mobile bar trailer moved up the hill as quickly as possible to try this thing out on the job I built it for.
so it worked. Overall, I think it came out really well, and I'm more than happy with the functionality of this. There are a couple things to note. It's very difficult to steer the trailer with this. I think it's because the ball is very far in front of the caster on this, and that makes the leveraging of the front of the trailer a little bit difficult. And I also think it's a little bit more difficult because this is a double axle trailer, and a lot of the homemade dollies that I've seen online are usually used on a single axle trailer, which makes rolling it around much easier because you're only pivoting two wheels rather than four. Something that you could probably try to correct that is find a snowblower that has independent drive wheels. Some of them do where you can control the left or the right wheel separately and it might make it a little bit easier to push the front of the trailer over. Or you could try and take off a set of the tires on a double axle trailer and I think that might help correct it. So that's it for today's video. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.